Welcome back to the program. It isn't every day that you come across a high-flying lawyer opting for a full-time career in writing. You know what, I can just hear the Attorney General of Singapore going, oh no, another one. <laughs> anyway, our guest this morning did just that. She, After the birth of her daughter, she decided to stay at home and to chart an entirely new career. Publishing and writing are not exactly irresistible. So what was the trigger for Shamini Flint? The prolific author joins us in studio to tell us more about it. Good morning, Shamini. Good morning. So we got to ask you, what made you make that move that so many lawyers seem to be making these days? Well, actually, I didn't um, quit work in order to write. I quit work when my daughter was born mm -hmm. because mm. I just wanted to spend a bit more time with her. Couldn't bring myself to go back to my 15-hour day. Um, but after about a year and a half, I was getting a little bit tired of coffee mornings and play dates and okay. <laughs> conversation with a one-year-old. So I started to write because uh -huh. it's something you can do from the home. You know, spend as much time with them as you need to, the kids, and then mm -hmm. when they're uh -huh. in bed, get to work. But, you know, it is true. It seems like a trend. We do see a lot of lawyers opting out and going into this writing um, career. What is the appeal for you? Well, I think all lawyers secretly think that they, you know, would be brilliant authors if given <laughs> half a chance. It's because we, we work with words. That's yeah. true. Of course, uh -huh. once you start writing, you realize it's a completely different skill mm -hmm. because when, when I wrote my first few sentences of my crime fiction, mm -hmm. it was about, you know, 20 words too long every given Every right. given second. I just couldn't help myself. I kept slipping That's a lawyer treat, huh? Yeah, <laughs> That's your experience right. helps. Your experience helps in the industry. I mean, you know, the kind of plots and twists and turns that you want to put into it. I think you have confidence with words. Mm -hmm. And yes, I think you're used to meeting deadlines and coping with a lot of information right. and, you know, balancing um, a complex situation. So yes, I'm sure, you know, it must help. But any, any job will help you, uh -huh. right? But besides crime fiction, we have a lot of books out here in front of us, some mm -hmm. children's books you've delved into as well. That's a different world of language. Children are a tough audience because uh -huh. you write the books and you know that it's the parents who need to buy the books. Right. So you've got to sort of appeal to them. But at the same time, if they go home and the kids don't like it, you'll never sell a second book to that parent. So it's a very difficult balance to appeal to the parent and yet appeal to the child once you know they've got home with the book as well. But what I was trying to do was books with an Asian, a Singaporean context, mm. because when I was trying to book, buy books for Sasha, my daughter, I just couldn't find anything mm -hmm. high quality that was set locally. And I think it helps children so much be comfortable with their environment, develop mm. an appreciation for books, if they have books that are set locally. I mean, it, it's true. I mean, I have a 17-month-old kid, and she's not quite into read. She's more into, well, she's taken TV, I think. She's becoming a bit of a TV addict, a bit dangerous. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, all because of me. But just for example, looking at this book, uh, I mean, again, very, you know, colorful illustrations. And as you mentioned, I mean, a kid's book has less words, but at the same time, the kind of words you choose to use are very important. What have you found sort of appeals to kids? What makes them... Because I don't know, I still don't know. Some books they just love and some they don't, and you can't quite figure out why. You know, the short answer is I don't actually know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been lucky. So far, uh -huh. kids do seem to enjoy my books. Mm. And I guess some of my books are written in verse. They really like that because it's got the repetition and the sing-song and it's sort of mm. the words mm -hmm. stick. And, you mm -hmm. know, they're developing language. So anything that helps words stick in their brains, you know, in their understanding, mm -hmm. they tend to enjoy. But illustrations carry picture books as well, and I've been lucky to work with two But I think you're in a good position because you said Sasha um, is at home, and you're writing for her. So if it's good mm -hmm. enough for her, it will be good enough for most of the children out there as well. I do use her as my sort of <laughs> sounding right. board. Yeah. Um, in fact, I will read her the book without pictures, whatever uh -huh. I've just written. And yeah. if I've engaged her attention, then I think, it's okay. probably all right because, yeah. you know, if she can listen to it without, without pictures, pictures. Yeah. she'll be fine with pictures. Well, in fact, we have a series here. It's about Sasha traveling uh, right here in Singapore to the mm -hmm. different parts of Singapore. Looking at this, I mean, Sasha, does she feel like she's a star now? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing is, it started, the first books came out when she was about uh -huh. two, so she's kind of grown up being right, right. Mm -hmm. the Sasha of the Sasha books. I'd have to sell a lot more books before she became a star. Mm. Um, on the whole, I think she's indifferent. Right now, she's worried that my son, Spencer, doesn't have any books. He's three. Okay. And so oh, she she's said to worried. Her, yeah, she's worried. Oh, so she said to me nice the other sister. day, Mommy, why don't you do 13 books for Spencer? Because they're 13 Sasha books. And then it'll be fair. And after that, you can do one each for both of us. That's just so yeah. hard, yeah. But does she have a say in the kind of, uh, the way you, um, craft your stories? Uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say that. Uh, but I, I do incorporate them both into the sort of exercise when we're sort of cutting and pasting pictures and trying uh -huh. to do the layout. Mm -hmm. We all sit on the floor with scotch tape. And, you know, I find that so much 
more fun than mm -hmm. the other things I was doing with them before mm -hmm. that is I started yeah. writing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's great to engage them in something that I think is developmentally useful, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we're both having fun, not, right. not just them. Great family activity. Well, as you mentioned a bit earlier, you know, hanging out with a kid all the time and speaking their language after a while can be a bit tiring. So you also wrote some uh, adult books in that yes. sense, you know. <laughs> so how, how, I mean, comparing the two, was it a much tougher, a much more challenging sort of task? More words, harder. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, within reason. I mean, the yeah. thing is, you can get away with a little bit more mm. when you've got an entire book to tell a story. Mm -hmm. Children are quite judgmental, so if something doesn't you know, strike the right mm -hmm. chord, then you may lose your audience. Mm -hmm. While with an adult, as long as it's well plotted, right. you know, each individual word perhaps doesn't have to be perfect. And um, you know, sometimes we forget it's easier to be long-winded than to be simple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially for a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, having said all that, we have great books in front of us. You mm -hmm. decided to go um, on a more unconventional route, if I can say, to set up your own publishing company mm -hmm. instead of looking for an agent. Well, my first book was Sasha Visits the Botanic Garden, so I wasn't really expecting Penguin and Macmillan to be sort of fighting over the publishing rights. Right, yeah. So, you know, I be began self-publishing. I sort of maybe regret not looking for a publisher for my animal stories or my mm -hmm. adult books. But the thing is, it's difficult to get published. I have 20 books out now in the last two or three years. I could still be receiving rejections for my, mm -hmm. you know, first book if I uh -huh. hadn't gone down this route. Frankly, it's not the publishing that's that difficult once you get the hang of it. It's mm -hmm. not the writing that's difficult because I personally find that fun. It's the distribution. Right. You know, getting mm -hmm. it into the bookshops, getting it out of Singapore into other countries. That's still difficult and something I have to do mm -hmm. bit by bit, country by country. So you know what you need yeah. to do? You need to make a movie. You've got to get someone to make a movie and then yeah, like, you know, all those yeah, books that have gone yeah. big. Well, I'm <laughs> hoping coming on your show is good enough. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We tell all the movie I'll producers out there. Yeah. You know? yeah, maybe they could do this one, How to Win a Nobel Prize, A Stay-at-Home Month's Guide. Mm -hmm. You know, you're doing what many women I know have who have kids have dreamed of. My wife tells me every now and then, maybe I should write a book. Maybe I should, yeah, you know, stay at home uh, yeah, stay at home. Do, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what can I say? <laughs> that's kind of why I wrote that book, because, you know, I see a lot of mothers in my position, you know, at home with the kids, mm -hmm. sort of living vicariously through yeah. their children, feeling frustrated, worried about big issues, whether it's climate change or poverty or anything, but feeling completely unable to do anything, make a difference. And I mm -hmm. think mothers are an incredibly powerful demographic if they work together. And that's why I wrote that book, to sort of inspire women to mm -hmm. be a little bit more environmentally friendly. Can we ask what's next for you? <laughs> I've actually just written a book I'm quite excited about. It's an intermediate fiction, meaning 9 to 14-year-old children's mm -hmm. book, so a full-length book but for children, which is what I'm calling an environmental fantasy. It's got the animals, mm -hmm. led by the orangutan and Borneo, fighting back because they're tired of being pushed to the brink of extinction, and there mm -hmm. are a couple of kids helping them along the way. Um, so that's one thing I'm quite excited about. I've worked with the National Heritage Bo Board to produce Sasha Visits the Museums, mm -hmm. so that's coming out soon. Um, a couple more picture books, including A T-Rex Ate My Homework, which okay. is okay. for my son because he loves dinosaurs, <laughs> yeah. and my second fine fiction. So All right. Wow, Still busy. You are keeping very, very busy, busy from the Saturday. Very I busy. I think even busier than when you were a lawyer. See, you might be doing your 15-hour days after <laughs> all. You just don't know it. <laughs> but it's at night because, you know, I have to be with the kids during the day. That's right. right. Well, thank you so much for coming in <laughs> thank and sharing you. us. Uh, her stories. We've been speaking to Sharmini Flint, a former lawyer who stayed at home to become a writer and publisher. And you're on Friday morning. We're going to take off for a short break, but do stay tuned. Still lots more ahead. We'll see you in just a bit.